long time no see to many of you. Uh, my name is Russell Gerber. Back again from the bush, hanging out in Botswana and Kruger National Park as well. With some wonderful memories and photographs out of the bush. But uh, back to reality now and back in Cape Town, coming to you all live from Cape Town. And a big welcome to you all to the Africam show brought to you by explore.org. And for many of you, you will know, but this is, of course, a live and interactive show. So if you have any questions, please put them in the live chat on YouTube. And we'll do our best to answer as many as we can. Today, of course, is a special day in the African conservation world. It is, of course, World Lion Day. So happy World Lion Day to you all out there. And today we'll be discussing a couple of things, of course, going through the live cameras as, also, as always. Checking out Willyfants River here at the moment. But to celebrate the day, we'll be introducing you to some of our more commonly seen lions that we're fortunate enough to get on the cameras from time to time. And of course, if you have any questions about those special characters, please send them through. But uh, yeah, we don't always see them, but it's uh, been lots of action in the lion department on the cameras in the last few weeks which is not uncommon as we get into the dry season and the predators often concentrate around the permanent water sources and before we dive into those little stories about those little lion characters. I've got a little question for you out there. In the spirit of our lion show that we'll be <laughs> focusing on today. But uh, question to you all. Where is the only place in the world you can see wild lions, wild lions, mind you, outside of Africa? Send those through on the uh, YouTube live chat and we'll see how many of you have got the answers right. So thank you all for joining us. Looking pretty quiet along the river at the moment. It's a little cooler across the northern parts of the country at the moment here in South Africa. It's been a big cold front that's gone through the country. You can see a few clouds around, which is pretty unusual to see in the northern parts of South Africa in the winter. Every now and again, a big powerful cold front that comes from the Southern Ocean will push all the way through the country and send a little bit of cloud cover into the low felt Kruger Park regions. As you can see, looking really dry. And for those of you who've been with us for a while, not too long ago, 
about four or five months ago, a lot of this area was very, very green. Lots of green grass around, thick bush. And of course, the water levels in the Olifants River were significantly higher. And you can see there, as we pan across the river, things looking really low at the moment. Also keep an eye on this pathway. For those of you who haven't seen it in the past, often we get some of our big cat visitors who walk along these game paths on the edge of the river. And right now it seems, but uh, we live in hope as always. It's always live, so we never know what might arrive. Quick hello to KL, all the way from London, England. Welcome to KL. Thanks for joining us. Well, while it's quiet on the live cameras here at Willy Funds, well, I think we'll have a look at our first little highlight that we wanted to show you. Essentially, these highlights today are just going to be a little outline of the, as I mentioned, the famous lions that we get on our various cameras in various areas. And we're going to kick off with one of the most commonly seen and really interesting dynamic at the moment, a pride known as the Takazile pride. And these videos were taken from a few weeks ago now, where these lions had taken down a couple of kills. They'd killed an impala, and then a day later, they killed a big buffalo. We managed to capture on the Nomad cam. But a really interesting pride, interesting dynamic. We think they've got about 26 members in all. Here you can see this is when they captured that buffalo and taken it down and everybody feasting. Not always easy to see these sorts of scenes, but it is, of course, the nature of the African wild. Eat or be eaten. And of course, for these young cubs to survive, their moms the adults of the pride need to be well fed, particularly with a pride of this size, around 26 members. There are these three new cubs, and listen to the... Huge disagreements around the dinner table when it comes to lions, very common. giving those new cubs a little bit of a fright. But this pride is actually ruled over by the two Macon males. Yeah, you can see the two males here in this little clip. And that is not uncommon to see coalitions of males being in charge of a pride. It helps to keep the population and the community, as it were, more stable. Sometimes those dominant males will be brothers, sometimes they will be sub-adult males that meet out in the wild when they're nomadic. And then they often will join up to create these coalitions and oust any dominant males in new areas that the young lions will move into. And that can often be pretty violent. It's not uncommon for us to see really aggressive fights between new males coming into an area. Of course, a lot is at stake for the dominant males, ones that are already presiding over a certain territory. These sorts 
of that. Takeovers are not uncommon in the wild lion world and necessary, of course, to keep the gene pool strong. This can be really emotional to watch big lions fight and we've got some action on that front in the areas where our cameras are in the last few months, so we'll talk about that in a little while as well. Quick hello to Judith, who says, Happy World Lion Day. May they live safe. Thank you, Judith. I couldn't agree more. I can't imagine a world without wild lions here in Africa. So long may the excellent conservation work that is being done around the country and on the continent and in other parts of the world continue. But let's dive into highlight number two. Still not much happening on the live cams right now. And we're going to go to a really interesting young male lion. He's a member of that uh, Takazile pride. He's a young male and has a very easily identifiable feature. A little torn off ear. And uh, the local guides have been calling him Vincent after Vincent van Gogh many moons ago. And there you see him here standing up and you can see that torn ear quite clearly. That injury actually happened when he was a cub and at the time looked really, really bad. But these lions are so resilient and can recover from incredible injuries. It's a youngish male, as you can see, just starting to get the first signs of a little mane coming through. And in the not too distant future, I would imagine those two big Mekon males, a coalition will eventually chase him off and he will have to go and establish a territory for himself. Along those lines, Denise asks, do nomadic males always stay together? No, not at all, Denise. They'll take some time to form a bond. And even if they do form that bond, it's not uncommon for them to split up for no particular reason. But more often than not, they will stay together. Um, it obviously keeps them more secure, helps them for hunting when they're out there on their own and nomadic. Also gives them more power to take over a new pride. Thank you for your question. This is, of course, back live now with some big buffalo bulls having a drink. little afternoon sundowner. These big male buffaloes known as dugger boys, which means mud. You often find them wallowing in the shallow water, trying to keep cool in the hotter months of the year. And the lions that we were chatting about earlier, that Takazile pride and that buffalo that we just saw taken down, I believe was a female buffalo. Very often in the wetter months, we don't see these big males as often. Bigger herds of buffalo tend to go into other areas. A 
where they can get fresh grazing when there's more available after the rains have fallen. So this is a tough time for the buffalo with not much grass around. Often a time of plenty for the lions. And diving into our third little clip that we wanted to show you. Another group of lions we see on the cameras from time to time is a pride known as the Torchwood Pride. We don't see these lions as often. We see them around at Nkoro from time to time. And they're often seen with the dubbed the two Kruger males, also a big coalition. But there's lots of really cute cubs in this pride, as you can see here. One of which actually has a wound on its side, uh, which is slowly healing now. And much like Vincent, who we chatted about earlier, I'm certain that that will eventually heal, but perhaps leave a scar, which will help us identify him in the future. So, uh, yeah, you can see lovely little views of the extremely cute little cubs. And the information that we have looks like they were, well, this was a pride to be about 18 strong, including the cubs. And uh, that excludes the number of young lionesses, three young lionesses who seem to have broken away from the pride. which again is not uncommon to see particular lionesses starting a new one. Here you can see that young cub with the wound on his side. It's difficult to say what that was from. can hear one of the most iconic sounds in the African bush. Lions calling to each other. Such a special sound and we're lucky enough to catch that on camera and of course it can happen anytime so keep your eyes peeled. You never know what might come on down to the waterhole. So that is a couple of clips from the of our views of the Torchwood Pride. We're back live now with these wildebeest. Or brindled canoe, depending on where you're from. But continuing on our lion adventure, we're gonna go into easily, I would say our most famous lions. These are the Tembi lions from our Tembi camera. They've really spent a lot of time around the waterhole and we've seen many, many hunts and successful hunts taking place here at this waterhole. Just this weekend, we had the lions take down a warthog and a nyala, which is a small antelope. You can see that this big collared female lion with a baby nyala. And this big old female, she seems to have three sub-adult cubs that join her at the waterhole from time to time.
Well, at least when we can see them. But here you see them running away with that kill that mom made. As I mentioned, not much sharing when it comes to the lions. They will share, but only under duress if they're forced to do so. Those are our beautiful Tembi lions that, as I say, we've been seeing really great shots of in the last few months. And that collared female with her three sub-adults certainly the stars of the show when it comes to the Tembi cameras. And here we are live again. Looks like another buffalo. You can actually hear that rattling bird call in the background, which was the ox peckers, birds that live on the buffalo and actually feed off the parasites that frequent buffaloes in particular, and of course many other antelope and large mammals in Africa. Just quickly, Denise asks, when do males get expelled from the pride and then become nomadic? Thank you, Denise, for your question. Normally at around two and a half to three years old, the males start to get pushed out by the dominant male. And they'll often fight back the best they can, but they're nowhere near strong enough to fend off their fathers. And you'll often see them get chased off and then try to rejoin the pride a few times until eventually they get the message. And they will then move off to try and find their own territories. And sometimes they will move off with a couple of other males, either their brothers or cousins. It might be a similar age to them. Uh, other times they will out on their own, run into other younger male lions who will slowly become more comfortable with each other and eventually form those coalitions that can eventually become powerful enough to take over their own territories. So hope that answers your question, Denise. And then lastly, but certainly not least, a lovely character that we've started to see more of. This is the Addo male. And this is up from our Tao camera, Dikwe. all of you out there who are not sure, all of our cameras are based in South Africa. Many of them part of the Kruger National Park or the Greater Kruger National Park. And of course, Tau, which is up around the border between South Africa and Botswana. And this is where this clip comes from. This young male is in the process of bonding with a new male, a different nomadic male, the Bolakega male, I believe. And the two of them hoping to form a new coalition. This Addo male had a brother who was killed by the dominant male lion in this area. He looks very full in this little clip. So it looks like he's got a, me a meal recently. But yeah, it looks like he, that young male is, well, pretty big male. He's now befriending a new nomadic male that may well make them very difficult for the 
current established pride males to deal with. One of those dominant males, a famous lion in the area known as Monomoholo. He was actually killed in a fight with these lions. So don't be surprised if there is a new takeover in the area. But uh, keep your eyes on the cameras for the action that might unfold at Tau in the coming months. So there you go, folks. That's just a couple of the um, prides and famous well-known lions that we see on the cameras from time to time. Some of the characters you might be able to identify if you stay with us and if you watch the cameras regularly. Of course, lions are more active in the early morning, early evenings and at night. If you're keen on spotting some lions, you never know when they might come down. They can, of course, come down any time, but always worth keeping an eye on the cameras early morning and late afternoon. Back live now with these brindled GNU. Beverly just commented, beautiful shots. Thank you, Beverly. I'm glad you've enjoyed some of the footage and wonderful things that we see on the cameras. Denise asks, do young females ever get expelled from the pride? Uh, Denise, they don't tend to get expelled by the others, but every now and again they will choose to move off on their own. It often happens, or when it does happen, it's often when a lioness is giving birth. She has her cubs away from the pride, and sometimes she will choose not to go back to the natal pride at all. Most of the time she will, and reintroduce those cubs to the pride. But every now and again she will go off and start her own. For the most part, you'll find that the females will stay with the pride for most of their life. Thank you again for your question. So, that's really it when it comes to the lions. You know, lions, of course, are so important for our natural environment here in Africa. They are, of course, the most dominant predator species on the African continent. Regardless, they still face a number of risks and threats across the world and in various conservation areas from generally the usual suspects, which tends to be the loss of habitat, human-wildlife conflict, but there are a number of incredible conservation groups out there doing amazing work to look after these incredible animals so keep your eye out and on the web for any potential things you can help out with and lastly before we go the answer to our quiz KL got it right. The answer is they can be found. Where can lions be found in the world? Well, they can be found in India. So outside of Africa, the only place where you can see wild lions is in Gir National Park in India.
you know, doing some incredible conservation work where the numbers of geared lions have actually gone up in the last few years. So I hope that may continue. Thank you for your interaction today, folks, and thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the AFRICAM show brought to you by explore.org. It's been my pleasure being with you this afternoon, and we hope to see you all again next week at the same time. We'll be looking at highlights from the weekend and, of course, going through some of our live camera shots seeing what might come down to the waterholes in these beautiful locations in southern Africa. So thanks again, folks, for joining us. We'll see you all again soon. Cheers for now.